about to start in one minute. Sorry about the technical difficulties. I got my man Alwoods coming back into the building. We're about to get it in. Talking about how these high school coaches can get recruited. So bear with me one minute. Set everything up. Bear with me family, we're about to start. I'm waiting for my man Al Woods to come into the building from Woods Recruiting. As you know, high school athletes are not playing. There's no AAU. So he's gonna talk about some ways that these high school athletes can get recruited, especially in the black community. Health, wealth, knowledge yourself, t shirt, real truth of power, black owned. All right, welcome to Real Truth and Power, where we provide health, wealth, and knowledge yourself. I'm going to start. Um, Bringing in my brother Al. He is definitely in the building right now. So I'm going to bring my brother Al in right after this intro. Here we go. All right. I'm bringing in my man Al Woods. Before I bring him in, let me intro, um, tell you a little bit about him. As you all know, at Real Truth and Power, we have a college recruiting program, and it's based off of learning and taking training from my man Al Woods from Woods Recruiting, and that is www.woodsrecruiting.com. He is from Cleveland, Ohio, the Ohio area. Um, so if you're not in that area, he still can help you with your recruiting. Um, I am going. All right. It looks like I'm looking good. How about you, Al? Yep. All is well. All right. So I want to introduce you and thank you for, um, helping us out, get this information out to the people. I wanted to talk to you because you are a college recruiter and you have a college recruiting program. Um, yes. the issues that athletes are going to have during this coronavirus situation? And what, what are some of the things they can do to make it through? Well, number one, have very good grades. That's going to help. Have a lot of video. That's very important. Um, if they're not going to be able to see you play, we could say basketball, for example. April is pretty much you know, gone as far as the, the live period. Um, and you know, July could be in trouble as well. So... You can get out as a student athlete, basketball student athlete, or just athlete in general, whatever sport you play. You can get out in front of this by putting together a list of college programs, a strong list of schools, 25, 30, 40, 50 schools, um, home state, neighboring states. Look at all those programs you think you can play at and contact those coaches. Call them up on the phone and and talk to them tell them who you are what you're all about your grades where you live all that information you're building that relationship with them so then at that point the coach will more than likely ask you for a video so if you've got a a youtube link or a huddle link to a video or someplace else now you can email it to them or text it to them or send it through social media that way you have a relationship between the student athlete and the coach 
and they know that they're expecting a link from you from a video instead of sending it to them randomly where everybody else is doing that and they're not going to see it. But if they know it's coming from you, maybe you have a good subject uh, in the subject line, your name, your, your graduating year, maybe your GPA, GPA 3.9 or whatever. Boom, that's going to open up their eyes. They know it's coming from you. They're going to take a look at it. And if they like what they see, the recruiting process has just begun. So that's what that's one major thing you can do. Now, you mentioned a couple of things there that was very deep. One of the things was 30 to 50 schools. For some, that may seem a little overwhelming and also providing video. Talk about yeah. um, how important it is to get your information out to a bunch of schools and also talk about how critical video is in the recruiting process. Well, okay. So the reason I say that many schools is because you're going to look at schools in your home state and the neighboring state. So if you live in Maryland, then there's a good group of schools in Maryland, but there's also Virginia and West Virginia, Pennsylvania, even, you know, the Carolinas, which is not exactly close. To, well, it is close to Maryland, Virginia, the Carolinas, all like that. And that's a lot of college programs. Plus, you don't know what that coach is looking for. Um, it could be something different. It could be um, you might be, be able to impress them so much that they want you over somebody who's on their current roster. So you never know what the situation may be. You never know that an opportunity could open up for you. You, uh, you just never know what the circumstances could be. So that's why I say more is always better. Plus, you know, the other thing is the coach could leave. OK, he could leave. A new coach could come in, have a whole different idea of what he or she wants to do. So more is always better. And then when it comes to video, a lot of highlights, a lot of highlights, a lot of highlights. They used to say highlights and, 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 and the entire game. That's fine, too. But we're talking about time and they want to see what you can do enough to get your foot in the door with that coach to the point where they want to call you and, and they want to see more and they want to talk to you more about it about your games and your grades. Maybe they want a transcript. It, it could be a whole lot of things that could happen because of your video. Okay. So I am a single parent or not even a single parent. I'm, I'm, it's, it's, we're parents, and I have a high school athlete, and he's not playing high school, which is crazy. It's hard to even think of that. Better yet, playing for a club or an AAU type of situation or a travel organization. Mm -hmm. And I have some video that's a little old, but I can use it. I put all these grades together, and I got to hit 50 schools, 30 to 50. It seems overwhelming. Talk about yeah. contacting someone like yourself, Woods Recruiting, and um, how you can assist them in that process and make it a lot easier. Yeah, so what we would do is talk with the family to determine what level of college they can play at. So that will help us narrow down the type of college programs that we're going to target. And then we would, we normally start with 10 college programs. Okay. We'll say, because a student athlete, they don't know every school, they don't know every situation, but we do. So we'll, we'll say, okay, let's do 10. Let's contact these 10 schools, see where we're at. And then if we need to add more, we'll add 10 more and 10 more and 10 more because we don't even always know what's on the other end when it comes to the college coaches. So we have a, a good network in place with a lot of the head coaches, a lot of assistant coaches that we could talk directly to them to find out exactly what their needs are or what they're looking for in terms of the type of player. So it, it just depends on the sport. They may want a... Uh, um, you know, a five foot basketball player can play in the post or something. That may be what some schools are looking for. So we would put together a list for those type of programs for that athlete. Now, I um, I don't have video. I'm, I'm, am I screwed or how would you help the athlete if they don't have video? Because, you know, I guess a lot of guys are maybe in the 10th and especially the juniors because it's critical to start. In fact, go, let me go back. Um for athletes that don't have video, okay. 
Let's start by when should they even be starting the recruiting process? Because they uh, some of them are going into high school. Some of them are in the ninth or 10th grade. Um, let me make this twofold. When should they be starting the um, college recruiting process? And what happens if they don't have a lot of video? What can they do to at least have a coach consider them? Okay. So, I th in my opinion, the recruiting process should start when they walk through the front door of high school in the ninth grade. That's when it should start, that day. That day, they should walk over to the counselor's office, their school counselor, and find out exactly what courses do they need to graduate high school and to college. So they should find that out, if not day one, the first week of school. It, yeah, it's going to be a little hectic and all of that, but that's very important. A lot of student athletes screw up their ninth and tenth grade year academically, and then they're playing catch up. Okay, it's going to take some time to get it, get it right. So that that I think is is uh, is very important. And then I think you said something about video. If they didn't have video, yes. what would they do mm -hmm. if they didn't have video? Was that okay? So. You know, so if, if they don't have video, you got to go out and get it. You got to go out and maybe do some sort of workout. But if, you, if that is not even possible, then it's important to, to, to go to a camp to be seen. If we're not in this corona nonsense right now, obviously these kids would be somewhere to where they could be seen by a college coach. But that's sometimes that's not always going to work. You know, you could be playing uh, on court number two, and are there college coaches that the, watching you play at that very moment? You know, sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. You know, so that's why it's important to have video. So even if the colleges are not there at your court when you're playing your game, have someone record some video. You know, these, these iPhones nowadays are really great for recording video, so get a lot of video. More is always better when it comes to recruiting. More schools, more video, more, more, more. Now, you mentioned a lot about video, um, which, is, yeah. which seems to be very critical in the recruiting process. Talk about some other things that are very important for college coaches, when, what they're looking for in a, um, in a college athlete that they're recruiting. Besides, um, I know they're going to be looking for a video to see if the mm -hmm. athlete can play. Um, but what are some other things that these student athletes – these parents can push to the coaches to give them a step ahead over the competition? Okay, great question. So the thing is, are, are they coachable? You know, what type of teammate are they? So are they the type of player when they're in the game, they're giving it their all, but when they come out the game, they drop their head, they sit on the bench, they're not cheering on their teammates. So colleges are looking at all of that because it, it used to be back in the day where they wanted to see the whole game film. They wanted to see their player on the field, on the court, whatever, and then they wanted to see him or her coming off, off the field and how they react with, interact with their teammates and their coaches. You know, so that's important because you don't want to bring in someone to your program that's not going to be a team player. Okay, that player may not play right away, you know, and is going to have to work to, to, to earn a spot or they're going to be one of those type of players that after a year – they're putting their name in the transfer portal so they can get out of there because they didn't get no playing time. So it's, it's, it's really critical about your coachability, your attitude, how you interact with your coaches and your teammates. And also, you know, what if that coach is coming to that school and is walking through the hallway and you don't know that that's a coach, but they have, uh, they're, they're checking you out. They're observing you through the hallway, through how you interact with your teachers. So all of these things are important when it comes to recruiting. Talk a little bit about um, the um, NC Eligibility Center. Um, I'm sure that's some things that they can do as far as getting um, that information updated and the importance of what the NC Eligibility Center needs and uses to get um, – a player cleared. I think we used to call it the clearinghouse back in the day. Yeah. Um, yeah. Talk about the grades and everything and how important that is and what the NC Eligibility Center is for the athlete. So that basically is where you are registered.
registered, and then they can verify your academics, your grades, your GPA, your test scores, your classes, all these type of things. Okay, so they're not necessarily going on the word of a student athlete and the parent. They need some proof to know that you are eligible for college. So if you're not, you're done. It's over. Okay. So some people think, and it's, it's this miscommunication out there, that because you are a great athlete, they're going to overlook your shortcomings and grades, and that's not how it works. You have to have grades to be eligible to be admitted to college. You have to be able to prove that you can do college work because you've got an athletic schedule. You've got academics all day, athletics. That's, that's your, the life of a, of a student athlete. There's not too much in between. And so they want to know, can you handle all of those responsibilities? So if you can get it done in high school, then obviously you could probably get it done at the college level. You're going to have a lot of help, but you've proven to them that you can get it done. Now, I'm a parent or a high school athlete, um, especially for the parents. I'm, they're probably working. Hopefully they're working. We're shut down. A lot of buildings in, in yeah. Maryland are, are shut down. And I'm sure you're from the Cleveland area, right, Al? Yeah. Yep. So yep. And you guys are shut down out there as well? It's a ghost town out here. Man, it's crazy. So, yeah. I you know, it's hard to ask answer the or ask these questions because you're thinking as a college recruiter, well, parents are working, but I'm sure they're still busy and trying to do a multiple 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 things. Talk about how overwhelming that process is and how important a recruiting company, a recruiting um, platform like your own, Woods Recruiting, can help the families with the recruiting process? Well, first of all, <clears throat> the process is extremely overwhelming for the parent because most parents are going through it for the first time and maybe the only time. So there's a lot of things you got to do. You got to put together a college list. You got to put together a profile. You got to get video. You got to play your high school season, your travel season. Um, you got co You got different coaches to deal with. Okay. You got your, uh, your school, you know, your grades and, and all of that. You have all of that to focus on, okay? You got to fill out, um, you know, NCAA eligibility information. You have all of these things to do. And so the thing with a lot of people is that they procrastinate. They'll put off one or two details to the last minute. And so this is not like filling out an application somewhere where you can put it off for a week or two. This is something that's time sensitive. And if you waste time, you can't get that back. So you've got to be uh, proactive in that approach. But let's say you can't handle all of that because most parents are working full time jobs. If, this, if we were back in a normal world here, everybody's working full time and all of that. So which recruiting can help guide the parents in, in the right direction. Because if you make one or two mistakes. Are you there, Al? We might have lost you. Maybe you didn't fill out the form. You missed the deadline. Hey, Al, repeat you that. You, you froze a little bit. Go back, go back and repeat that again for me. Yeah, I'm just, you know, it, it could be a time situation with parents. You know, they're working full time. They don't have a whole lot of time to get involved in this. And, and wasting time could be critical. But Woods Recruiting can help push the parents in the right direction and give them the information they need so they don't make mistakes and waste time. We see it so many times that they're, they've used up all their free opportunities and then they well, say, oh, hey, well, okay, to we're going to come to you and see if you can help us. And, and but they should have gotten some of these things done but Woods six Recruiting months ago, push the 12 months in the right ago. Direction and you know, it happens all the time. It's just human nature that we're all going to procrastinate. You know, I don't take out the trash all the time, you know, or, or you know, right. or whatever. You know, we all procrastinate different things. But in this recruiting, in recruiting, you cannot waste time because you cannot get it back. Now, you, let's get into the athletic profile. Um, yeah. Because that is a crucial way to get um, college, I mean, high school athletes recruited. In fact, when, I, when you trained me to be a recruiter, and uh -huh. I used my son as the guinea pig. And when you introduced me to that profile, people were wondering, like, how's Little ever getting all of these coaches contacting him? He's not on the top teams. Right. Um, talk about how important that is for um, 
the parent, the athlete to have a profile that looks professional and explain to them what a profile is? So uh, an athletic profile, what, what we call it, is basically a resume that will have student athletes information, height, weight, GPA, SAT scores, where they're from, you know, if they're from Baltimore, Maryland. Um, um, so to have that and then it'll be um, maybe a breakdown of what that athlete can do athletically, academically. Video is on there. Um, so that's kind of the profile. And so nowadays you want that profile optimized to where it can be viewed on a computer screen, but also on the, if you can see that, a cell phone. OK, so most traffic nowadays to profiles are coming, uh, being viewed on a cell phone. So it has to be optimized for the cell phone where a coach can scroll through and look at it. Boom. See the video. And now, you know, when you're seeing that profile, the college coaches, now you have your personal contact information in the body of your email. OK, so you're getting that out. And that's how they're going to get your foot in the door with these college coaches that they like what they read. And like what they see, yeah, you, you, you've established a connection. Now, you know there's going to be parents that are going to try this on their own, yeah. um, try to throw something together. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, do you advise that? Is it good for the parent to talk to the coach? Well, okay. Um, I will say yes and no. So... I, I, back in the day when I was first getting started, when many, many years ago, I would go to a lot of uh, basketball camps because that's the only sport I worked with in the beginning was basketball. Okay. And so I'm at summer camp. I'm a whole week at a camp, you know, a team camp, thousand players there. And I knew the coaches. They don't really want to talk to the parents. You know, this is what they're saying privately. And the reason is because every parent is going to say my kid is the best. My kid deserves a scholarship. My kid is this, that, and the other. All these great glowing accomplishments. Where a recruiting service is going to tell the truth, it's going to speak the language that a college coach understands. Okay, so, you know, and then the parents, they're going to throw it together, a profile, and they're going to do it on the cheap. Okay, it's not going to look professional. It's not going to be optimized for the cell phone. You know, it's just not going to look right. And a college coach is just going to click away from it and not pay it any uh, attention. It, it would be like, you know, how we get junk mail. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't even look at it now. We just throw it in the trash. Right. You know? Same now, thing. now, you mentioned the cell phones a few times and how technology has changed. I, yes. I know during my college recruiting training, you were talking about how you used to um, – send the DVDs and stuff like that through the mail. And yeah. then we went through our phase where we would email the college coaches. Now it's even easier if you can get that cell phone and text them. You're able to text college coaches the profiles where they can look at it, open it up on the phone. That's what you're saying, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, you know, it's all about speed. It's all about speed, putting it together professionally, but, but being able to have the tools to get it to them quickly, okay, where it looks professional and you have multiple ways to reach the college coach. So a lot of parents don't have that time to do it because they work all day. They want to come home and sit in front of the TV. It's a full-time job, but you know we kind of have it down to a science. And we, we are always evolving with the technology, and you have to. You have to. If you, don't, if you don't learn it, then you've lost. Now, before I let you go, I just got a few more questions for you. Sure. One of the questions is about D1, D2, and D3. Because, okay. and, 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 and it's crazy, it's a crazy question because um, a parent may believe their son is not D1 or D2, and think it's easy to get into a D3, mm -hmm. and a parent may think their child is a D1 or D2, and they are not. Talk right. about the importance of looking at all schools if you're not a high-ranked athlete, and also talk about how hard it is to get into those D3s, which are very tough to get into. 
Yeah, the D3s, we can start right there. They're very hard to get into academically. So you've got to be in, in superior condition athletically. But now D3, they're not a pushover like they used to be 30, 40 years ago. They used to be, you know, non-respected. Just anyone could play at that level. But now it's changed. They're looking for good players, too. Okay. You know, for basketball and football. Here in Ohio, we got one of the best D3 programs you know, in the country, Mount Union, you know, they win the D3 championship every other year, but they get a lot of D1 transfers. They get football players who were at the D1 level who couldn't make it at that level, and they transfer it down to the D3 level to play at Mount Union. And there, I think there's one in Virginia that's pretty good, and there's some, I think, out in Wisconsin, some powerful D3 uh, schools. But, you know, this thing with you know, my kid can play at the D1 level. I've seen it a, a, a billion times. I'm not even going to say a million times. I've, I've seen it and heard it a billion times where everybody thinks their kid can play at the D1 level and everyone can. not So the best rule of thumb I use for this is, are you good enough to play as a freshman? Are you good enough right now as a high school player to play as a freshman in college? It doesn't mean you're going to play as a freshman, but you have to be that good coming out of high school to be able to play as a freshman, to give to give those players at the college level a run for their money, that you're going to take their spot. you got to be that good coming out of high school. And if you're not, then maybe you got to go somewhere else. Wow, that was, that's, that, that was a lot you gave us right there because I, I just want that – to be known when you're trying to help out some of these kids and they'd be like, man, I'll just send it to D1 or D2. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I know I can get in D3. And then when they get in D3, they have to realize that all of those D1 people that players that haven't been playing, yep. they're going down to D2. All of those D2 guys that haven't been playing, they're going down to D3. And then you got guys that are have been sitting in D3 that are like juniors now that are big and strong. And, you know, yep. they're playing. So it's definitely difficult to um, get into D3. It's very, very competitive. competitive. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's extremely competitive. It really has changed a lot, um, especially with um, the transfer situation where the, a lot of players are transferring. Um, so I'm really not a big fan of transferring. I think players should stay where they are. I mean, unless it's totally broken down with the player and the coach, then, yeah, get out of there. But – if, if you're not playing because there's somebody better than you, that's no reason to transfer. Go ahead and get better. You know, I'll use me for an example. You know, when I got to college, I wasn't great. But we had uh, a guy, a seven-foot guy on our team who ended up getting drafted by the Knicks. And so I ended up going against him every day in practice. Mm. Every day in practice. It was a war, right? But I got better. And that helped me get overseas and professionally overseas so if it wasn't for that guy i don't know if i would have gotten better you know because it wasn't easy it wasn't easy but that's how the players have got to approach it you know sometimes you know these guys are getting one year two year in college and then they're able to go pro because they've worked on it they worked on their game they didn't give up they didn't quit they didn't transfer i, I know there are situations where you have to transfer you know if you're a quarterback and, you know, there's eight other quarterbacks on the team at college. You know, maybe you're not going to get a chance to play, so go somewhere else. But you got to stick it out depending on your position, you know, and, and your coaches and the atmosphere, you know. But if it's not working out for you, then, yeah, transfer. But, you know, I, I, I just think the player should stay. Now, um, about to close you out, sorry, you know, I always have questions for you. Um, That's okay. For parents – um, in different areas that, you know, may be interested in Woods recruiting your service. Um, yeah. How can they contact you? And before you say that, should they be worried because you're out of state? Because, you know, explain the technology and how you can get that. They can give you that information, how you can assess their child um, mm -hmm. and what you need from them and how they how you can help them, even though you're in Ohio. Yeah. So. Um, we first started with just working with kids in Ohio. And then I realized that the same issues were nationwide. And so we started branching out throughout the country. So the thing that we do is they can go to woodsrecruiting.com. 
Uh, they can fill out an athletic questionnaire. And so on that questionnaire, it asks all the general information, but also there's a spot where you can include your video. So we get questionnaires all the time now, and, uh, or someone will reach out to me on social media with a link to their video. So we'll look at the video. So we're not going to talk to a student athlete who can't play. I mean, I get videos every day from players who that they can't play in college. So we don't even bother to call them. I'm not going to, you know, basically take someone's money and I know we can't help them. OK, so we don't do that. But if we know we can help them and they want uh, and they want our help, then wizardrecruiting.com, fill out the athletic questionnaire. We're going to talk to the parents. We're going to describe a program. We're going to describe a program for them, how we can fit their needs, whether it's D1. We've helped kids get into D1. So, you know, it's, it's a possibility. You don't have to be ranked to play at the D1 level. You just have to be good and have good grades. So there's opportunities out there. Um, and we've worked with kids from all over the country. So that's not an issue. Now, before I let you go, one more thing, because you said something that was very important. You don't have to be ranked to go D1. I think a lot of parents get um, the politics, especially in yeah. basketball, and I assume it's in other sports, is mm -hmm. who you know, what school you go to, and then what program you play for, and they feel like, man, I, I can't compete. I can't compete. Um, and me taking your advice I got my son away from those programs, and he still was able to go to D1, not going to a powerhouse basketball school, not playing for the so quote, sneaker shoe brand. Um, talk about how using services like you can help you overcome and get more coaches than some of those guys that, well, maybe not some of those guys that are top ranked, but have you compete with those guys? Well, you know, uh, the, the, all the colleges – are recruiting the same players, okay? And so they're looking for somebody that is just as good as the ranked players, and there's many of them. I mean, what's the difference between a player who's ranked 100 and and then after that there's no more ranking? So there's probably the 100 or second, third, fourth player is just as good as the, the, the top 100 players. So rankings don't really mean that much. It's just, it's about, you know, you can't measure the student athlete's heart and their determination, you know, and then their grades. Those things are important. So you don't need rankings, just conversation pieces between the the grown folks who go to the who, who go to the game. This is for entertainment purposes only. Now I'm gonna let you go on this one. Um, okay. Just talk about the the system you use and what what makes your company. You've been doing it for a while. Um, long time. Yeah, long time. Just break down your background and talk about the system that you use that makes you able to hit all of these coaches. You know, because, I mean, it's a lot of schools. It's a lot of schools. And so we would sign up. Sometimes we would sign up kids for, for nothing. So we work a lot of kids from the inner cities, and we don't charge them anything. And so we can send out information to college programs that way. They really appreciate it. But now we've got our foot in the door with that coach. They know us. They respect us. We're building relationships. That's important, to build relationships. Those assistant coaches are going to be head coaches or they're going to be assistant coaches someplace else. So now we know them and we have a network. And so that's kind of one of the ways it works. There's a, there's a, a dozen other methods, but those are the things. It's about building that network. That's very important. It's critical. Well, I want to thank you again, Al, because, you know, yes. um, me uh, being a basketball coach, I started my own basketball program. You know, I'm always doing something. I got the real yep. truth and power. I got my own business and everything. So we always trying to do different things. And I just want to make sure that a lot of people that I know and people out there that's watching the podcast that we push it to can understand that they still have a chance to communicate with college coaches. It's not yep. particularly over. Um, any words right. of advice to them before you close out? Yeah, just uh, don't give up. Keep working hard. There's opportunities out there. Start early. If you're if you're in your if you're a tenth grader, eleventh grader, get busy with it now. Uh, you know, during the summer months or even right now, we got a lot of downtime. Study for the SAT, the ACT. Do that as well. Get maybe get in some groups. You know, everybody's on their phones. Get your teammates together. Start studying. I think that's very important. Study for that test because if you don't have it, you're going. You're going to go to junior college or you're going to go, 
you're going to be working at Walmart somewhere, stocking shelves. So, um, so that's important. So that's that's the best I could give amongst everything else we've talked about. But there's opportunities out there. You just have to know where to find them. Man, I appreciate you, Al. Um, for those that are just watching, please hit that like and subscribe button. Get this information out to our people. It is very important. And um, I just thank you again, man. I know you got a busy schedule. Um, busy. But, yeah, but, but just to give the people some help, man, you know, during this oh. crisis, it's is definitely difficult, especially in the black community, because we don't yeah. know or we lack the knowledge of using um, – recruiting services and especially people that look like us like yourself that yeah. understand our trials and tribulations well hey i, I appreciate what you're doing what you're seeing many of your episodes and it's great that you're getting the information out there that's what people need they need the information from people who like us because we are in it i'm in it you do what you do you're out there every day and i think that's very important that we keep pushing that information out there as much as possible I always say more is better, and it, it really is. When it comes to recruiting and just information to the people, more is always better. Well, I want to thank you again. This is Al Woods from Woods Recruiting. Man, thank you so much. Um, be safe out there. Um, yep. You know what I mean? And um, I, I, I wish you and your family um, safety. Yes, uh, same here. Yeah, be safe. We're in some, some really critical times, but... Uh, Let's just stay in the house until they say it's all clear. You know it. You know it. All right, Al. Um, be blessed. Thanks again. Okay. You too. You take care. All right. That was my brother, Al Woods, from Cleveland, Ohio, out in the out Ohio area, man. And um, for those that don't know, it's very critical. If you're a high school athlete, I can't even tell you how it feels for me not to know my son doesn't have to pay college tuition. Um, in fact, he redshirted his four, first year. Um, so he got five years of college for free. You know what I mean? And that, that's just something I can't even tell you how important that is if you're a high school athlete. He's lived his life. He made it to the NCAA tournament as a redshirt freshman. So he's even played in March Madness. Um, and I have to always give Al praise for that because – I didn't want to get involved in the politics. Um, I took my son down to D.C., shout out to Keith St Stevens and Team Takeover, and I got with my son with um, uh, People's our Family Artie, Michael Beasley's uncle, shout out to the family, and um, he played for Threat, and man, we got it in to play some of the top teams in the country, and he got, he, I would say he was heavily recruited, maybe not by the Dukes or the North Carolinas, but by a whole bunch of mid-majors. And there's nothing wrong with being recruited by mid-majors, D2s, and like I said, for those that think they're D1 and you're not and you disregard D3, you won't get into D3. It's hard to get in academically. So you really want to be on point. Um, and now that baseball, softball, all of the spring sports can't play, what are you going to do as a high school athlete, especially in the black community, when the coaches can't come see your games, um, when they can't come see you play, and when you can't do those club sports like AAU? So for those that don't know in basketball, I always say there are three of the top basketball events. is the NBA playoffs, March Madness, and the live period for high school athletes. There's nothing like it. You see some of the best top-ranked athletes. Hundreds of teams are traveling all the time, and it's crucial for them to play. And think about it if you're a baseball player. The season is pretty much canceled if you're a senior um, in high school. And um, if you're not signed, you're in trouble. And we always tell Learning from Al Woods to start that recruiting process at an early age. Um, if as soon as you're in the eighth or ninth grade, you should be um, trying to take SCT tests and um, act tests and having an athletic profile. He also mentioned re video recording is very crucial to the recruiting process. I can't tell you. We can send your profile right out to a college coach via a text. That coach can look at his phone, click on the text, click on another link, open your profile, get all your video and call you right there. 
Um, Al is out. Again, www.woodsrecruiting.com. He's from the Cleveland area. Um, so I wanted to give him a shout out. He's always given us knowledge. And if you want to talk to him, just go to his website. You don't even have to sign up for his program. He's always willing to just help parents, help college, at, I mean, high school athletes, and just talk to him about the process. And I guarantee you, once you talk to him, you'll feel more comfortable and want to, if not use his services, ask him for help a lot. Um, and I think that is very important. So again, please hit that like and subscribe button. Let's get the uh, information out to the family. It's very important. We want to, um, you know, we want to get this out because it's very important. Also, let's make sure, you know, we stay quarantined, stay in, practice your social distance. Um, it's very important. Um, that, you know, we make it through this time, everybody get all of this stuff off the way so we can keep, continue to get back to life as normal, let this virus spread. And if I'm not mistaken and correct me if I'm wrong, as it gets hot, maybe the virus will start to eliminate. So let's hopefully we can, um, you know, get that out, stay home, save lives. You know what I mean? And again, that was Al Woods from Woods Recruiting. That is woodsrecruiting.com, W-O-O-D-S, recruiting.com. If you know anybody that needs help um, with college recruiting, and if you don't feel comfortable hitting Al right away, contact us. And you can reach us at realtruthandpower at gmail.com. That's realtruthandpower at gmail.com. So again, another positive and strong show we had some technical difficulties later when we tried to air and also we did a show early if you're interested or you know someone that's trying to buy a house we interviewed a brother um chad craig and it was a phenomenal interview um brother chad was kicking some information about how they go through um buying property and selling homes um during this crisis by using like virtual stuff you can look at the house through a, a virtual screen and see everything. Um, he was talking about how the notar not if you need something notarized, they don't you don't have to go to the notary republic. They can do it through online and stuff like that. So that was some amazing stuff. Um, it might have been a little uh, feedback on that, but we definitely corrected it on this one. I think so. That's good as well. Tomorrow we're supposed to do two shows. If you're listening, we're going to have Tina from Homeschooling and Oils. If you guys are interested in homeschooling, definitely check out that episode. Um, you know, public schools have always sucked to me. I knew I used to struggle and didn't get a lot out of schools. I felt I was smart, but I just couldn't stay focused. It was too much distractions. So, you know, I got all of my schools from private schools, which is a penny. But, you know, we're going to talk to Sister Tina, and she's going to talk about why you, we need to think as a black community about homeschooling our kids. Um, so definitely tune in for that. If you, um, if you are not hooked up to our YouTube, the YouTube gives alerts. So please go to that YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, and then hit the um, alert bell. That way, if we don't go live on YouTube, once we post a video, you'll get that. I know a lot of people are going to want to see that video of um, homeschooling and um, see if that's an advantage for them and their child. So another, um, oh, and then tomorrow night, we're taking calls about Pastor Jamal Bryant selling the COVID coronavirus test. Should he have been giving it away? Um, somebody shared on a, um, on my um, Facebook that, you know, they got to give him credit. So I shared it back. I was supposed to, I didn't want to share his name because I know a lot of people get upset. So what I was I did was I went into the article and shared it, but I didn't put a question mark right away. So my people was calling them all kinds of names, going at it like, no, he's, you know. So I told him, don't be tight right against us. Call up the show. So tomorrow at seven, we're taking phone calls. Call in, talk to me, let your voice be heard. Should your passage Jamal Bryant be selling the test? I think he wound up not doing anything or should he give him away? Um, so that's another show. Two shows tomorrow. Again, thank you for tuning in. I want to say hold up to everybody. And um, we're out of here. Uh, peace and blessings.